Welcome to tonight's Yukon City Council Yukon Municipal Authority work session. It's April 16th, 2024 at 6.30 p.m. We are here in the council chambers, which is the Centennial Building at 12 South 5th Street in the great city of Yukon, Oklahoma. Tonight, we're gonna to be discussing the exciting topic of wastewater treatment plants by the exhilarating Joe Davis. Madam Mayor, thank you so much for that introduction. It is going to be an exciting discussion. Uh, Mr. Vice Mayor, Council, again, my name is Joe Davis with Team Design, and we are going to go ahead and talk about where we are with regards to our existing wastewater treatment plant and the future for the city of Yukon. So with that, we've been talking about uh, improvements to the wastewater treatment plant for a few years now. First, we're gonna go through a history, how we got to the existing location of our wastewater treatment plant, some of the processes that we've been utilizing at the wastewater treatment plant from the early 70s all the way up to today. And then we're gonna look at the future where we're trying to go. So as we talk about the history, as any mechanical device that we have, we have to constantly do upgrades to the system. We went ahead and started with the existing three lagoon system back in 1970. And then we went ahead and changed to the more current type of wastewater treatment plant we have today starting in 1978. And you can see all the major changes we've had. And they average about every seven years we're doing a major change out at the wastewater treatment plant, either with the process or the existing equipment. So we'll go ahead and look at the location of, of the uh, three lagoons. And again, it's at the exact same location that the wastewater treatment plant is. It's just off Wagner Road by the North Canadian River. We go ahead and discharge into the North Canadian River. <clears throat> we currently have a permit for 3MGD. And the future for the city, we're looking at a plant upgrade of 5MGD. So we've been looking at how can we go ahead and make those modifications to the, the uh, flow from a 3MGD plant to a 5MGD plant as easily as possible, recognizing we still have to get permitting from OD, ODEQ. So we talked about in the previous slide all the changes that have happened out here. This kind of goes ahead and shows you the current status of the uh, wastewater treatment plant. It shows some of the improvements we've made at the wastewater treatment plant, uh, beginning for some of the first expansion improvements we did was back in 1993 through 97, 2001, 2007, 2014. And again, what we've been doing is improving the process and changing out existing equipment. So the question is, why do we need to upgrade our wastewater treatment plant? Currently, we're flowing close to that 3MGD level. If you recall, that's what our permitting level is, is at 3MGD. And you can see from 2010 to 2020, Population's been increasing in Yukon. People really do want to come out to Yukon. There's a, a lot of reasons why, but we have to, as a city, we have to recognize that we have to meet those demands too. So part, some of those demands is taking care of, of our infrastructure and part of that infrastructure is improvements to our wastewater treatment plant. So from this, we can start seeing that sharp increase in population. Right now, I, as I say, we're pretty much at the three MGD. We're pretty much at the plant capacity. So to look to the future, we're looking at a plant capacity of 5 MGD. So the easiest way to go ahead and make that change is if we do a simple reclassification of the plant. And again, we're basically gonna be utilizing the same processes that we have at the current plant, but we're going to do improvements to those processes that we're doing. So I'm gonna start at the headworks and I'm gonna work our way through the plant and again, this is really exciting for everybody. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about it, the headworks, we have large sanitary sewer mains that go ahead and bring all the sewage out to the wastewater treatment plant. And it comes to what we call the headworks. And at the headworks, we have screens uh, that are there that try to screen out some of the big solids before it goes through our treating process. And again, those could be tree limbs, it could be Coke cans, it could be a, a multitude of things that we really don't wanna go through our biological process. So we're trying to remove those solids out before there. Then we go from this location, we go into a pump system. And the pump system is our screw pumps. And again, that big circle is at the headworks. Right after the filters, we have our screw pumps. And now we start pumping it into our different processes we have. So the first process we go through is our aeration basin. 
That was the large square tank that you see in the circle. And with that, we have what's called fine air bubble diffusers. And if you can imagine a round circular membrane with a bunch of pinholes in it, we pump air through these membranes, through the piping network that's below those large discs. And part of the process is we have to introduce oxygen into this biological process we're doing to try to render it so we can go ahead and dispose of the sludge. And then the effluent we can go ahead and pump into the river. So as you've probably heard many times, we talk about the bugs in our wastewater treatment plant that try to render our, our sludge neutral so we can go ahead and dispose it. They have an oxygen demand that we have to give them so they can stay living. So these discs go ahead and allow us to go ahead and insert oxygen into this, this, this tank so we can go ahead and, and have this organism work and we can start having this biological process breakdown that we're doing at this, this first stage right here. And again, you can see the nut pipe networks underneath and then these round discs. The proposal is to go ahead and change out all the piping and the disc in the existing tank and upgrade it so we can go ahead and take care of more flow. So we'll have more heads, more efficient heads, and more efficient piping. And again, this system was constructed back in 1997 with one of the plant upgrades we did. And now it's time to go ahead and replace that so we can take care of additional flows. We do go ahead and replace those heads because those heads get worn out and get clogged. But what we're looking at is going ahead and changing what that, that current system is. It'll still be a fine air bubble diffuse system. Part of this process we talked about was we have to get air into those discs so they can go ahead and get that, uh, that uh, oxygen inserted into that, that big basin. So we talked about replacing the blowers. <coughs> I currently have three blowers in the uh, blower building right now that goes ahead and blows air to those, those discs to go ahead and get the oxygen in. So we're looking at upgrading and adding additional blowers that can go ahead and meet that demand for that 5 MGD. Again, we're going from a 3 MGD plant to a 5 MGD plant, so we just need more, bigger and more. So then after we go through the fine bubble diffusers, the material that we've gone ahead and treated in that process now goes to our secondary clarifiers and splitter box. So you can see we have a splitter box right here, so it comes off this big aeration basin, goes to the splitter box, and if you can see it, the three round circles, those are our secondary uh, filtration clarifiers. And then that goes ahead and allows us to go ahead and control the flow going to those round clarifiers. So the largest diameter one was constructed uh, 15 years ago. Um, and, and again, that's a 100 foot diameter, I believe, on that clarifier. Um, and what we are proposing on doing here is we'll go ahead and have the splitter box so we have better control going to the three existing clarifiers. So as we talked about, the age of some of these, uh, the equipment just needs to be replaced. It's, it's outlived its useful life. We have one of our clarifiers that the equipment needs to be replaced. So this project will go ahead and take care of the replacement of the clarifier equipment. And again, the clarifier uh, clarifiers basically have it so the sludge level is on the bottom side, and then the clear water is on the top side. And what we do at this, this stage is we can go ahead with the solids, we can go ahead and, and discharge those solids. And we have two different locations we can do with the solids at this location. As we have more of the flock settle out, the clear water, we can go ahead and discharge back to the river and we have another process we'll go through. But this is the, the secondary clarifiers for this phase right here. And again, are, if you- Are all three clarifiers working? Two of the clarifiers okay. are working right now. I was right gonna now. say, I thought one of one them was of, out. Yes, one of them, that's, that's correct. We need to go ahead and replace the equipment. Mm -hmm. it's, it's broken and needs to be replaced. Then we talked about the sludge, what we do with the sludge. Uh, that goes in the sludge digester, and that's a, another part of the process. So the bottom heavy material uh, is the sludge on the secondary clarifiers, and from there we go ahead and put it to sludge digester, and then we go ahead and finalize the treatment of the sludge and the sludge digester. And that's that part of the uh, plant. So the big round square tank is the digester. The building is where the belt press is. 
through this process is now we're taking care of the solids. We've pretty much rendered them safe so we can go ahead and dispose of the solids. So the belt press is from the um, digester. We can go ahead and have the solids go to the belt press. I believe they do their belt press operations once a week. Go ahead and get them compressed, squeeze the water out. It's basically what we're doing in that process. So then it's easier to go ahead and dispose of that material. Uh, and then here's a, the, one of the, the latter stages is improvements to the final fluid discharge to include pumping for wet wa uh, weather flows. What happens right now is at our contact basin, this is where we go ahead and the water that's on the top of the secondary uh, uh, clarifiers go to this uh, position right here. We go ahead and chlorinate the, uh, the, the water that's coming through there. Uh, and we have to have a contact time, so it's going through kind of a zigzag going through that contact basin to get the contact time. And then at the end of the process, we go ahead and dechlorinate it so it's go ahead and, and safe to, to uh, send it to the river. Our problem is right now, this is a gravity flow operation, so when the river, river rises, we can't overcome the head in the river. So this phase of the project, we're looking at um, I'll go ahead and go to that, is taking care of the outfall line that's coming from there. A and again, right now, it's a gravity flow system. Uh, what we're proposing to do through this section is going ahead and allowing during normal uh, river operations, it'll still be gravity, but when the river comes up, we'll go ahead and install some pumps that can overcome the head. So instead of backing up in the plant, we can go ahead and pump it into the river. Nothing worse than having your plant back up. So, That's true. So uh, there's a couple of things that we're talking about at the very end is regrading and rehabilitation of the flow equalization ponds. So during heavy rainstorms that exceeds, for example, let's say 5 MGD and we can't run that much through the plant, we have some ponds that we can go ahead and divert that flow that's coming into the plant. And then once when that, that big push that comes in from our, our um, uh, sanitary sewer lines occurs, and usually it's after a heavy rainstorm because we have infiltration into our, our sanitary sewer system, then we can go ahead and return it back to the headworks and then go ahead and start processing it. So it's kind of a, a, a backup that when we have heavy rain events that we aren't discharging it and exceeding our limits for ODEQ into the river and running our, 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 our uh, plant too far and too fast, uh, we can go ahead and bypass it to the basins, then go ahead and bring it back to the headworks. Then lastly, we're talking about improving the instrumentation. A lot of the instrumentation is from the original plan out there, and then to go ahead and provide a backup generator. Mm -hmm. So the question is, how do you do it? Um, and you can see the bottom number is a little over $8 million for construction. And so sticker shock is kind of one of those bad things when we know that we have a wastewater treatment plant. How can we go ahead and fund that the easiest way we can? Uh, luckily, the, the uh, city's had some wonderful opportunities. One of them was with the uh, county ARPA funds, and then the other is there are some congressional grants that are out there that we can obtain. And this past year, the city of Yukon was really lucky uh, through hard work, through a lot of the people here, to go ahead and get one of those grants, to go ahead and identify how we can go ahead and do the construction. The issue we have here is Still, we don't have enough money to take care of the plant. So how do we go ahead and prioritize the most urgent needs? So we've gone ahead and developed a phased uh, implementation program with the cost associated with it. So we can go ahead and identify what we can do with the funds that we have readily available, recognizing that we can continually try to get grants in the future to take care of some of the other needs that we have at the, the, the wastewater treatment plant. The grants are a little bit tricky because they usually don't like to do continually grants on a project. They like to do a grant for one project at one mm -hmm. time. They don't want to do multiple grants for the same project. So we have to be careful how we describe what the improvements are that we're looking for the plant. Uh, so again, when we're looking at it, for example, the last grant that we received, it was for the effluent pumping and piping, which was from the grant. That's about a 700, uh, well, let's see, it's a $700,000 project. We were awarded, I believe, $560,000 for that project because it was a 20% match for the city. 
And again, that is a standalone project from all the other improvements we're doing at the wastewater treatment plant. So when you see on this, uh, this the list right here, we have some grant applications in. And again, the grant applications are for standalone processes. It's nothing that's going to be required for improvements to the entire facility. We talked with the uh, City of Yukon staff and the operator to identify priorities that they see. And their top priorities were taking care of the secondary clarifier that you noted that mm -hmm. wasn't, wasn't operational. And we also get some dings a little bit from ODEQ. Um, they'd like to see that operational. And then the other ones for the ease of operation, make sure that we can go ahead and have an effluent pump so we can go ahead and take care of this issue when the river's up. So those are our first two phases. Uh, phase three is influent pumping. Four is the aeration basin that we talked about, which were the new disc and piping in there, and then the blowers that will be associated with it. You can see the next phase we have is the belt press. And again, that's more of a standalone type of project. So we currently have an application in right now for requesting a grant for that project. And, and again, on that project, I believe it's a little over $1.2 million. Um, and then we have the digester, which is at the very tail end when we start talking about handling the solids, uh, buildings and electrical. The equalization pond is that one pond that we show that under high flows, we need to be able to bypass pump over to. Uh, a little bit more plant work. And then the last one we have is the backup generator. And again, we're asking for that to be a standalone project. Where we are in the process, and, and again, this is some of the, the funding that we talked about. The county ARPA funds, there's $3.725 million for that. For the congressional grant that you were just awarded, there was 560000 for that. So you have a total of Four million two hundred eighty-five thousand on construction budget, and again, that's towards that eight million dollars total that we talked about a little bit for the entire improvements out here. So the next question is: We recognize is when is it going to be done? Um, we recognize with ARPA grants that we have a time window to go ahead and get those dollars spent, and it's a very tight window mm -hmm. from right now. So um, to go ahead and get ODE, ODEQ permitting processes, we had to go through many different hoops. And the first hoop was last year we started doing the river modeling. So you guys may have recalled that we were working towards that river modeling in the summer and the fall. We have to do it through two different seasonal uh, cycles so they, they can see how the river is, uh, is operating during low flows and high flows is basically what they're wanting to see but at constant levels, not any spikes during rain events or anything like that. So each of those testing programs was for a little over a week. We've got those completed in the last part of uh, the fall of uh, last year. Next phase is the river modeling. And the river modeling is looking at all the loads upstream and downstream so that they can have an, a good understanding of what the quality of the water is in the river. And then they go ahead and look at our models from the wastewater treatment plant, what they currently are, and then what we're projecting to go ahead and dis uh, discharge into the river. We're in that phase right now on the modeling, with the modeling to be completed in just a few days. I believe I have down for the 22nd of the month. We had a meeting with ODEQ with the city and ODEQ and the consultants talking about the process, that how we move forward. And they recognize the funding sources that we're utilizing in the process. Uh, they believe that we'll have our ODEQ final permit at the end of this summer. But during that, they recognize that we need to start design. And so we are starting design right now with the anticipation that when we go ahead and have our final design, we'll, we'll coincide when we get our ODEQ permitting. And we're going to go ahead and do um, a few of the projects first on the bidding. Uh, see how the bids come in, and then we have some other projects that we have on the backside to make sure that we spend every single dollar that we can. So um, you can see right now we're under plant hydraulics, um, and that's sizing the pipes and the pumps through everything through the uh, plant. Then the next thing, we'll go ahead and take care of what we talked about earlier for the 
the first and second priorities, which is the secondary clarifier, the flow control box, and the effluent pumping and, and uh, pumps. Um, and then we'll be, uh, and this will be in the fall of 2024, we will bid that. And then we'll have plans also completed for the influent pumping and the aeration blowings, pipe diffusers, and instrumentation. And again, that right there is about that $4 million, $4.2 million budget. Uh, once when we start seeing what the bids are, it's going to let us understand those plans completed on how we go ahead and bid those. And again, this is based on the conversations we had this past month with ODEQ. When's the deadline for the ARPA money to be spent? So um, we need to have the projects um, underway this year with funds spent by next year. 2025? That's correct. Okay. I know they are asking for projects that are in the process because sometimes you can't always get everything. We're asking for an extension at the federal level, um, but that hasn't been voted on. But so is it possible? So, so we're doing everything we can to spend those dollars. So that's why we have looked at if we have a hiccup with ODEQ yeah. on increasing from 3MGD to 5MGD, they've gone ahead and said that we can go ahead and make the improvements based on 3MGD. So, for example, if we say we need four pumps, we may go ahead and do three pumps right now with one pump remaining, mm -hmm. but we'll add at a later date once okay. when we get the approval for the 5MGD. Same thing for the processes, too. Okay. I just don't want to send any of that money back. No, we don't either. Same thing for the blowers, too. We'll go ahead and replace all the heads out there, all the piping and the aeration basin. If it says we need to have six blowers, mm -hmm. we may only put in four blowers right now and we have to come back and, and add two, mm -hmm. two blowers later. Okay. Any questions? Concerns? I think that's it. All right. Unless you guys have any questions. Okay. I know we're not the only community under the wire on getting that money spent. So hopefully they're going to make some arrangements for us. But if not, this looks like a good plan. All I right. appreciate it. All right. And again, the city's done yeoman's job trying to get additional grants, too. They've been applying for additional grants and actually receiving them. Mm -hmm. So that's been fantastic. That is. All right. Thank you so much. That was exhilarating. All right. <laughs> All right, we will uh, break now and come back at 7 o'clock for our city council meeting. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>